hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Marshall here for the first time in a while. I'm bringing you a one versus one in the latest Planetary Annihilation Balance update. This game we've got between Slabul Graini, also known as Nick, and Small Chungi, also known as Killer Kiwi. And we'll be playing on Spindle Range. Ranked 1v1. Right, so as the players spawn in, you should recognize their names by now if you don't. Essentially, they are very, very good players of the game. Nick in blue, going straight for a bot into air, bot, air, lots of PGENs, and then into vehicles as a fifth factory into a bit of mechs storage later on. Meanwhile, Kiwi <clears throat> going bots, mechs, air, power. That's the way he's going. Going bots, uh, bot Faber first each. Probably going for two, I would imagine three. And because there's a lot of mechs close by, they might get away with four, but to be honest, three and then starting your defense is the way that most players tend to go. Because Nick's built a whole set of queues here, I'll put that closer so that you can see the order that it gets built. Factory, mechs, factory, power, and thereafter. First two fabs go together and then straight into a couple of docks to defend and or scout. And then and third faber thereafter. <clears throat> Kiwi, however, going on a slightly different tact. Going for a transport with a fab in it. Nope, it's a transport with a boombot. Boombot Pelican. I think it might have been seen, unfortunately, for Kiwi. Now it definitely has been seen. Nick's going to try and use this to kill that transport. Don't think he's going to get in, in the right approach vector here, really, to be able to get rid of that boombot. But it's all on whether Kiwi, with that Firefly, retains the micro. Notice how he's combining... All of that with a Firefly for the extra vision range. So Nick went two fabs, a couple of docks, a couple more fabs, and then more docks into Sparks. The way that he's going for things, and then into that second bot factory where he'll probably bring out more docks with a mix of Sparks in there, but mostly docks, I would imagine. The, the new update seems to be uh, very early game docks heavy and a transition into vehicles later on with the Ants and the Infernos as their hard hitters. Drifters now are very much um, ill-advised against an army of ants. <clears throat> you were here playing rather passively, it must must be said. Oh, and there goes the Pelican! Oh, just got it down, but uh, Nick sacrifices his air for it. But it means that his fabs are safe. Potential overcommitment there. The beauty about uh, Spindle Range is that you've got a lot of mechs nearby and your expansions go towards your opponent. Problem is, as you go for more nearby expansions, you multiply the fronts that uh, that you can be attacked on. So it's a little bit of a, a risk-reward situation there, but of course the more mechs you have, the more you can build, the more you can build, the more you can defend your mechs, and so on and so fifth is the way of things. Forward factories are also advised for the expos. But yes, as I was saying before the air thing, Kiwi was playing rather passively with his armies, sort of keeping them in his base rather than getting them out and about. Nick doing a similar thing, but he's got them further out in sort of defensive locations, which is where you would ideally expect such armies to be. Going into a second air factory now, that'll bring Kiwi back up into the air game. Nick has his second air factory already up, and of course, you've got more factories producing air, you're going to build more air and win the air game faster than someone who has fewer factories than you do. Now the trouble with bots on spindle range are the trees. They're everywhere. Some trees, of course, rough and irritating. Certainly is uh, the thought of the docks. Hence the transition into ants later on. They can sort of pound through those trees a little bit easier. 
But also, we'll see combat fabs coming out from both sides to use those trees for a bit of uh, economy supplements. You know, Kiwi, who's a little bit behind on metal because he hasn't expanded to all three sites on the pole, is just using a combat fab there to, to boost things a little bit. Contrary being said, though, Nick has got so much metal that he's floating a huge amount. He could probably just build power and build factories. Yeah, here we go. Look, he did have that metal storage queued. He's realized that he's floating a lot of metal, got rid of the metal storage, and he's just gone straight into, you know what, I'm not going to bother storing the stuff. I'm just going to go straight into factories. Going to stabilize his energy production and then just tank it out. Rather than going up to, to T2 or something like that, he's just going to get loads and loads of tank factories. Kiwi, on the other hand, needs to catch up a little bit on his expansion side of things. Getting raided a little bit here, we'll have lost a Faber over there. And this is the beauty of the docks in the early game, they have so much mobility. And then once you've done the whole like raiding thing and forcing your opponent into certain plays, that's when you transition into vehicles to hold positions a bit better against these docks and strikers. <laughs> Those trees. Absolute pain in the back. Both sides there, really. The striker... I don't know. It can hold its own against a couple of docks, but that's only if they're not micro docks, of course. I think the striker's place in the meta is still, uh, still being discovered. Correct me if I'm wrong, or someone in the comments will uh, pop something in there about the striker. Saying how amazing it is, and then someone else will pop it in saying, oh, how terrible it is, but such is the way. T2 vehicles from Kiwi now, rather than going factory, factory heavy. One fewer factory than, uh, or one less factory, should I say, than, uh, than Nick. I'm just going straight up into T2 instead. Nick going for the T2 bots. Potentially to try and use Blue Hawks to fire over the mountains. Equally, it could just be for the mobility of the Slammers. To find out exactly where he's going with that. Zoom out a little bit now to, uh, to the poles there so you can see what's happening on each side. This is where you get just the small groups of ants. Small groups of ants and maybe a couple of uh, bots to support. Just going around, just seeing if they can be a raiding party. Not trying to attack the base, just going around expansions. And if they find an expansion that's undefended, well, they'll pick it off. Win-win. If they don't, well, then they're scouting for you, right? Whereas these groups here, likewise from Kiwi, you know, they're not really meant to attack a base. They're going around checking for expansions and finishing them off. Bumblebee there trying to focus down the stingers. Gets taken off. Taken out for its uh, insubordination of the enemy. Lack of respect of Nick. Kiwi now up with his T2 vehicles going for a mix of levelers and shellers. He even built a storm out first. Now that's an interesting choice. I haven't seen that occur before, but then again, the potential is there for Nick to pivot into air. And if we just go to Kiwi's vision here, he's not actually sure just how much air Nick has built. He's only seen small amounts of air try and focus down his, uh, his bot forces, so he doesn't actually know that Nick is not committing heavily into air. So while that storm is wise, if he'd scouted better, he'd realize it was unnecessary. Instead, maybe using a different vehicle factory to just build out a couple of spinners would have done the job. And also notice how he's using uh, all of these fabricators to boost out this factory. Build as many units as possible in a short space of time. And going for that teleporter there is also noteworthy. Vehicles are slower. Building teleporters allows them to move around the planet a lot quicker. Problem is, or rather the question is, where's the other teleporter? 
going to be over here by this expansion, maybe, to just surprise Nick a little bit. <clears throat> we'll find out. But look at this. Again, this, this group of bots is not meant to attack a base. It's meant to be an annoyance to Kiwi, to try and force him to react, or to accept that he's got to lose a bit of expansion. That's what Nick's doing here with all of these mechs in the middle. Now this force is slightly different for Kiwi because it's got a couple of levelers supporting it. It could take out one of these more entrenched expansions. And by entrenched expansions I mean ones with maybe a factory or two and a point defence. It's a good place for them and radar as well. Nick will be able to see... Uh, to see all of this stuff with that radar. Notice there how Kiwi focused down the slammer first in that army, making sure that the threat was neutralized to allow the levelers to continue to be dominant in that fight. And he kept them at the back as well, while all the cannon fodder was at the front. Let's have a look around, see what else Nick is doing with his T2. Here we go, look, slammers pushing here into this expo. Baba's gone. Pelter gone. Radar gone. There you go. And they'll have to be dealt with with this little defensive force here. The ants, as they push in, will be told to focus on those slammers to try and finish them off as fast as possible, because otherwise those slammers will tear through this army. There we go. Now this has just become a small raiding force rather than a potential factory killer. Be though elsewhere, as I said, got rid of that entrenched uh, entrenched expansion, and now because this is so small and doesn't have the cannon fodder, it's become a raiding force. So it's going to back off from the base. It doesn't need to push in the base and lose its forces. It's going to come back, regroup with more levelers and shellers, and become an attacking force again, not wasting that metal. One thing that Kiwi does need to do now, though, is uh, get some T2 mechs, and that's exactly what he's doing in his base. Look. You can see his eco. He's floating on uh, power, but he's struggling for metal. So he's going to try and get the T2 eco in his base now, where he can relatively defend it. And that's going to allow him to potentially even get out a second T2 factory going into the next part of this game. What's Nick up to? Yep, there we go. Second T2 factory. Got a lot more eco. Doesn't necessarily need as much T2 eco in his base to go for that T2 factory, but he's doing it and he's pivoting to vehicles as well to go toe to toe with those shellers. Oh, what? Interesting time for lobs. I'm not expecting this. <clears throat> I reckon this decision is to supplement bot uh, docks numbers as cannon fodder and as raiding. He's also got a lot of power, and if I remember correctly, these guys use power rather than metal. Might be mistaken on that. I'm fairly sure they do. Fairly sure they do. So he's going to use those for his extra power. I might, someone will correct me in the comments if that's not the case, but for some reason I seem to remember that being a change that was implemented a long time ago, that these now use power rather than metal. Yeah, look, straight into that power for the recharge. Yeah, that's what Nick's done. He's using his excess power to supplement his forces nice and quick. Attacking force from Kiwi though, on the other side of the map here though. Got some levelers coming in against the... Whoa! Hello! What was that? <laughs> what was that? I tell you what that is, that's the storm. That's the storm saying, Oi, you're not coming close. That's, a, that's an effect mod that I have on, by the way. I think it's like explosions effects or something like that. Area of effect effects or... Something like that, but that is definitely not <laughs> vanilla. I forgot I had that on. My word, goodness me. It was a uh, big wow. It has a lot of air now, though. 
that's worth noting. Kiwi does not, and this is probably where that storm is going to come in handy, because if Nick decides he wants to pivot into bombers now that he's won the air game, as it were, he can do, or not because of the storm, says no. With big uh, willow trees. Anyone's recently watched Pocahontas? I recognise the shape of those. Here comes Nick now, look. Bunch of slammers into the back of the base. Could potentially take out a factory, but he'd also lose whole, this whole army just for that one factory. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to come back, save the, the army, regroup, and potentially go for an expansion instead of the base. You know, you've got this expansion over here that we could attack. We've got this side of the mountain range that he could attack. That would be a much better target for, for these groups here. Notice here, not great from Nick. He's getting chased by sniper bots. They're just getting picked off. Not really where you want to be. T2 vehicle force from Kiwi, though, on the outskirts of Nick's base. Not great. Trellers and levelers in there, massive docks horde coming through just to try and close the gap and do some damage. There's a lot happening all in a short space of time now, and Nick's even gone orbital for a radar, look at that. But he doesn't have the power to support it now, he needs more power. He's gone two radar, three radar. <laughs> Gosh. Well, his lobs aren't going to be building anything for a little while. Here we go, look at this. Sheller on the other side of the mountain. Being a nuisance. Doc's trying to uh, act as bait. Here we go, two forces grouping up. Nick actually losing that engagement, over committing to pursuit, I think, there. Look at this. Boombots from Kiwi going against the wrong targets, really. But uh, those will be good against T2 vehicle clumps from Nick. So Nick now always has to have docks with his vehicles to pretend, protect against those booms. But you'll notice <clears throat> how slow these lobs are reloading. Because Nick does not have the power. His commander's actually in a rather open position there. He wants to get back into the base and just maybe just set his commander just building power constantly. Note up to a third T2 factory from Nick. Still only two from Kiwi. I think the boost is making the difference. Gosh, so much pivot to boombots here. What's going on? We're just sending them in different locations to just pick stuff off. I mean, if, if it works, it works. T2 Air from Nick. That could be a game changer. Get some Hornets out. Those things are nasty in the new patch. They have a very high fire rate. We'll take out vehicles very quickly once the Hornet numbers get up. You can only really use those to their best. Whoa! Oh, wow. But you can't even boombot a vanguard because of its new fire rate. Oh, disgusting. Oh, <laughs> absolutely disgusting. Yeah, he needs the energy to use the radar to give the hornets their proper effect. Because otherwise they won't be able to fire at max range, if I remember correctly, because their vision is shorter than it is their range. Now mixing in the vanguards, though. I'm going to make these vehicle clumps pack a bit more of a punch. Kiwi here with another force waiting. Could probably go in and take out that little bit of eco there. Numbers of the army still even Stevens. Factories very much favouring Kiwi. Don't forget, though, that most of that factory difference are the Boombot factories. 
Mick just needs some power, but he's not getting it. There we go. Finally building it with his comp. But oh yeah, that's why nothing's working for me right now. Will that pivot give Kiwi the chance he needs? Kiwi now is in the lead in the metal game. And also notice what Kiwi's done there. He's just had his expansion raided by a vanguard. And he's just sent another group of fabbers straight back over there to rebuild it. Maintaining the pressure. Maintaining the economic resilience. And forcing re-raiding. That's the thing. If you lose an expansion or you lose a group of fabs, just control click out a few fabs from your factories. Go and replenish the expansion. He was doing a great job here of uh, making Nick feel like he's got the control. The problem is, I feel like Nick, at the moment, has cards up his sleeve. They're just waiting to be played at the moment, like that T2 Air, for example. Boombots here could present a problem to his vehicles and defense, though. Hence the mines. Look at that. Good use of mines against the booms. But the air pivot is definitely going to be a problem. Kiwi knows this. He's building uh, Galata and um, Flak around his base. And also spinners out of his uh, vehicle factories. There you go. Again, I will... I'd put money on Hornets coming out of this T2 air. The only problem for them are sniper bots that can shoot down the missiles. It's not a problem if Nick's going for a snipe, which I imagine he might be thinking of doing. He's falling a little bit behind in the economy game. And also in the army game as well, especially like, so Nick is already behind in the army, right? And I always say this, most of that then is in the air as well. Right, look how much that is. So another 50 of that is in the air, whereas Kiwi has not really committed to air at all. He's just committed to anti-air. Which enables his pushes to happen. Nick can't really do any pushes with his air at the moment. He can't do any damage with it. And he's only got a couple of bombers in there at the best of times. So at the moment, this is all dead metal. Right, yes, it provides vision. But it does little more than that at the moment. More T2 factories. Can he afford that? This is crazy. There's fighting everywhere. This is brilliant. Vanguards to supplement, shellers, levelers, all mixed together. Blue hawks as well. <laughs> That's it. And this is where the boombots come in, right? They can just close the gap to these vehicles very, very quickly. And that's why Kiwi went for the boombot factories. Oh, Nick, where's the Hornets? Why are you building Phoenix? Don't need them. You're not fighting an air game anymore. wonder if that's more muscle memory than anything else. It's like, well, whenever I build T2 air, I always go for a Phoenix first. Notice how Kiwi is now expanding his frontline defense down to the equator. Look at these Galata towers, look at the mines, and then look at the unit positions. Wherever the defense isn't, generally speaking, there's a, a unit being passed to that location. No, oh, still no hornets. What's going on? I mean, if it was me, I would definitely go hornets, but. How many, how many air factories has Kiwi gone for now? See, look, still, two air factories from Kiwi. Two. And Nick is still building air to air. I don't know why. Don't know why. Let's have a look at Nick's scouting of Kiwi's base. Yeah? He just hasn't been able to get in to see that actually there's only two air factories. The moment he's able to do that... Then he'll realise, ah, oh, I don't need Phoenix at all. Oh, Kestrels instead. 
I buy Kestrels instead of those? Possibly? I th if I remember correctly, the damage of Kestrels is better against uh, tougher targets. Whereas the Horsefly is much better against the... Uh, sort of softer targets, if you will. So the Kestrels should be able to rip through these things in a matter of hits. As long as the anti-air is defeated. The air has to be taken down first. For the Kestrels to be able to pay for themselves. Ares? No. Nick, really? An Ares? I don't know, but he's got his uh, unit advantage back up again. And notice, the air, while it's still about the same, that's closed the gap on the floor as well. And now the uh, the same thing about air-to-air air air being useless still counts for spinners. So now we've got to worry about Kiwi's ratio of spinners in his forces. The more spinners he has, the fewer ground-to-ground -ground tanks he has. Here we go. This is where Nick's air is going to come to the fore. He's realised, I've got enough air now. Look at this. Bombers, bombers, bombers everywhere. This is going to be a real problem. We need more uh, flak now. We need more storms. Because we've got a lot of bombers and a lot of kestrels. And kestrels will happily sacrifice themselves to go after some storms if... Well, ideally not, but... You know, if it opens the opens the way for the bumblebees, then it works, right? I'd rather send a couple of Kestrels in against a storm and allow the bumblebees to clear up, rather than send the bumblebees over against the storm and only have two Kestrels to clear up. I'd much rather have that density. Apart from anything else, it's a psychological attack as well. It's like, oh, pfft. yeah, you've killed two, but here's a swarm. He was problem now. He just needs to get into the power lines. Get to the power lines. He could do so. Whoa, look at that rapid fire new turret. I've not seen that in action before, but my word, that thing's fast. He's definitely got a problem now. Loads of air fans, but what for? Building constant air fabs. Maybe to go for T2 air of his own? All of those mines are falling down because we've got the combat fabs here. They detect mines. And we've also got the skitter in there on the front. You can see. Just about here. There we go. Got it. That also detects mines. Here we go. This defensive force, Vanguard's at the front, soaking all of that damage while the other units take out the frontline defensive force. And now all of a sudden, there's not a lot to defend against this. Kiwi's going to have to root some units from elsewhere. We've got three shellers on the back there defending by the factory line. It'll just about hold. But Kiwi will be slightly unnerved at how close that army got to his base now. Meanwhile, on the other side again, we've got Vanguards defending. Against the T1 heavy force, the air, an omnipresent threat to the ground. The air is halfway complete now. Commander boosting the T2. Kiwi has double the metal output of uh, Nick here. That's absolutely insane. Uh, oh. Oh, we've got a nuclear missile. Blimey, so we've got Titan versus Nuke here. What a game this is. Shout out to Dreadnought for sending this in.
Is that something that often happens when replays get sent in? They get sent in by someone who played in the game, and you're like, mm, are you sending this in because you won? Generally, that's the way it goes down, but... Uh, third parties sending the replays in are much better from a caster's perspective, because then I have no idea who could potentially have won. All I know as a caster is how long the game lasts. <laughs> Okay, we've got Boombot splitting up. Good micro there. Splitting the forces, making Nick keep guessing. But there's too many docks for those booms to do anything useful. Don't continue to send them in, Kiwi, if you're seeing a horde of docks on the defense. But here we go, we've got vanguards on the defense. We've got shellers on the attack. If we keep them at range, we'll be absolutely fine to pick stuff off. The Blue Hawk can't get close because we've got some... Uh, Gilly snipers on the attack. The Blue Hawk missiles just get shot down before they find their marks. And there we go, the Shellers doing their job. The AA is down though. The Bumblebees can come in and clear up house. But here comes Kiwi's Air. The first time Kiwi has an air deterrent. There is now 80%. Nick's going to have to pivot back to uh, to AA, I think. In comes Kiwi from the rear, though. And he's into the power line, the T2 power line, no less. That is a problem for Nick. That is a big win. Even if this army does any... Doesn't do anything more. Killing off that T2 power is big. Look at Nick's economy, and he's gone. And a Nick can... <laughs> and a new comes in as well. What? Unbelievable. How fast was that rushed up? Look at that! Unbelievable. That was rushed up incredibly quickly. I've gone the wrong way. Whee. And there we go. It was the quick surprise nuke and the energy takedown. But overall, I'll tell you what it really was. All down to that eco. Let's have a look before things really got hairy and just compare the situation at a static moment. So here, 500 mechs for Nick, 700 for Kiwi. Let's go a little bit further, maybe to about there. Right. Kiwi has dominance over the equator mostly. Nick sometimes got close. But Kiwi had so much T2 metal in his base that the only places that he didn't have T2 metal were out in the middle of the battlefield. And the fact that he could build the T2 mechs in the middle of the battlefield was a real bummer for Nick because the moment you can get T2 mechs in places that you can't really defend securely, then you know you're doing well. Then you know you're doing well. Nick had to try and hold his own on so many fewer factories as well. 17. There was a point in that game where Nick just stopped building factories. Because he didn't have the eco to. And for a long time he had a massive air force doing not a lot. Personally, I feel like that was a bit of a weakness, but... Uh, Feel like it was a bit late that his air decided to show up and if he'd actually kept his air kind of secret and hidden in his base then he might have been able to pull off some kind of snipe I think the Hornet would have had range from this mountain here for that commander for example it would just have been a case of you know trying to go for the snipe but uh, 
Generally, that doesn't really happen at higher levels, is going for those snipes, but... Anywho. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope you very much enjoyed that video. Cast, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for sticking around, even though my uploads kind of dried up for the last sort of six months. I do appreciate it, and thank you for... Being a, being a new joiner since uh, since the update when I popped out that video. So thank you for that as well. Uh, as long as replays are sent in, I'll see if I can cast them as and when I can. And also stop by my Twitch page, because I might be doing a bit more streaming of that in the near future as well. But all that aside, I've been Marshall. And as always, have a good one.